upgrade your pendant lights. I will show you how to make this design in a renter friendly way and at the end of the video I'll show a featured blooper. Hi my name is Kim with Kim Imagine DIY where I hope to help you imagine the possibilities with DIYs and crafts. If that sounds like fun, consider subscribing. Now let's just jump into the materials that we will need for this project. If you don't have a Cricut to make this stencil, you can also use a compass, a ruler, and a circle stencil to help you out. And a reminder, you can skip ahead with the YouTube chapters below. In Cricut Design Space, you're going to go to Shapes, click Circle, and I'm making mine six and a half inches. This is for the large top part of my pendant line. And then I'm also going to make another circle smaller. So then you select both circles, align center to center, and hit Slice. And you can delete your excess. Then you can grab a circle again. And this is going to be the holes that my dowels are going to go through. I have three dowels, so I'm actually making the holes 7 16 diameter. So we're going to go to Shapes, click Score Line, and I'm actually just going to change it to Basic Cut. So it's, a, it's more of a solid line, I can see it better. I'm actually just using this as kind of like a spacing tool to help me with the design. I know that between each circle, I want about four and a half inches. So that's how long I'm making my line. And I'm going to just line up the edge of the line to the bottom, select both, align horizontally. And since it's positioned where I want, I'm going to select them both and click attach. And then I'm going to put a circle on the other side and do the same thing. It will make sense in a little bit. Then I'm just detaching and selecting all and so I can have all three items attached together and duplicate. And I'm going to use the rotation angle. So I have my vertical and then I rotate it 90 degrees to get my horizontal. And for how many dowel vertical lines I want, I'm just doing every 30 degrees. So the next one, I'm making 30 degrees and then just duplicate it again and hit the flip to get the other side. Add another 30 degrees, which would be 60 and flip again. Then you're gonna select them all and hit center to center. Then I'm just going to use the sidebar and then detach each grouping, it should be about six. Once I have all of them detached, then you're gonna use your sidebar, hold down control and select all the line layers. And then you can group them together and then just hit hide or delete because that was just um, a tool to help us. So now that we have the circles, the part that we want, we wanna select all the circles and actually we're going to weld it. Now the reason why we're welding it and not attaching is because once you weld something, it becomes permanent and you're able to slice. So now we can select our big circle and all the little holes, click center to center, and then hit slice. Then you can delete the excess on those because you just want those empty holes on your main stencil. Now I'm going over to the Shapes button, going to score line, changing it to cut, because I'm going to put a little slice mark in my stencil and later you'll see why. Then you're just gonna go over to click make it, browse all materials, and click flat cardboard, or if you're using a cereal box, it's just a stencil, so it just needs to be um, thin, somewhat sturdy, and have your Cricut cut it out. So I went up incrementally, so with my little drill bit set, I started small and then I just skipped every couple or so to get to the desired hole size I wanted. Now if you have a Cricut Maker, you can cut this out using the knife blade, and I did for one of them, but these 716 holes are too small so it got wonky and kind of destroyed everything. So um, 
I decided just to use some clamps and do the old fashioned drill through with my bits. Honestly, if I went back again, I'd probably just have the Cricut Maker cut out the center hole because man was that a pain in the butt. If you have a circular hole saw, this will make it so much easier, but I don't, so I had to use a razor blade. It took a lot of pressure and a long while. Afterwards, my hands started hurting, so then I just took my smallest drill bit and just started to drill holes all the way across and then attack it again with my razor blade. The good thing though about using the razor blade is that it's the cleaner cutting side because when you drill all of the holes all the way around, it kind of splinters up some wood. Just remember also to flip it over so you can cut from both sides using the razor blade to help keep the edges clean. Also what helped a lot is using my Dremel to Dremel all the holes on the exterior and the interior hole, anything that you basically cut. It also makes it so much cleaner and helps when you put the dowels in later. Then just to help clean it up completely, because I am staining these, I use a sanding block. So then I just use my clamps and I'm using a razor blade to cut that slit that I initially put in my stencil. This is actually going to help me get it, get that wooden piece around the wire on the pendant line. So it makes it temporary. Just an easy install on and off so I don't have to take off the whole glass. You'll see at the end when I assemble it. And then I use my Dremel again just to sand off um, the edges. Just make a little 45 just to help it get through the top piece and it looks look more finished. And then I use the sanding block over all the pieces because I'm prepping for staining. Now, if you have a more creative way to help you with your staining project, feel free. This is um, not a be all end all thing. I just drilled some tiny holes into uh, one side of these dowels and to fit a toothpick in, and I just found some styrofoam that I had from something that I ordered so they can dry vertically because I have so many pieces. Then for staining, make sure you wear gloves and you protect your surface because it gets everywhere and then you end up staining your hands if you're not wearing gloves also. I just used a brush that I didn't really care about because it's really hard to clean after you use it for staining. And then just paint the entire thing and then I just set it up to the side and I let it dry overnight. I use my Cricut again and this is actually all pizza boxes that I, I use. I made three quarter inch circles for the top piece and what it is is actually going to stop the dowel from falling through. To make it sturdy I did cut double sided and then glued them together and then I used hot glue to glue the circles to the dowels. You could probably use wood glue, um, hot glue was okay because I changed my design seasonally. You know, hot glue it just pops off sometimes, especially because they're just such solid surfaces and not very porous. So now I also wanted to add a little bit of a tropical Polynesian element to the wire. So I just got some jute from Walmart and it is like $2. And I wrapped it around the entire cord. It took a while. <laughs> you start to get cramps in your arms, so I just wanted to give you a heads up, but I only, because it's temporary, I just put double stick tape on the top and double stick tape on the bottom just to hold it down in place. And now you can see here why that slip is, that slit is a very helpful. You're just going to open it and place it right on top. And then you just drop all your dowels in and I have these little metal things that stick out. I have freedom to move my positioning so I don't have to worry about it. And then I made six of those discs. I have three pendants, one for the top, one for the bottom. You don't need to slice one for the bottom because you're just popping it on. And then just wiggle the dowels in. I did make it a little bit tight on purpose so it can hold it without glue because this is renter friendly and you want to be able to assemble and disassemble no problem. And if you're a little bit eccentric like me, I only have it up during the summer because I change my pendant lights seasonally also. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you truly enjoyed this DIY. I loved how it turned out. Don't forget to watch the blooper at the end and I will see you guys next week. The math is I'm doing every 30 days